Hello and welcome. I'm your geek, Eric. And today we're going to talk about 10 tips that I and a couple of my friends have gathered over participating in five global game jams and a myriad of online game jams. Let's jump on into it. Tip number one, sign up early. All you got to do, go to the Global Game Jam website, linked in the description box down below, find a site relatively near you, and hey, if you have friends who live across the country, you can go to the same site this year because it's all online. But here's the reason why you want to go early. There may be a Discord server that you need to join pre-game jam, or you may need to download a program like Zoom. It'll probably be listed on your site's page, so check it out. Now, after you join that Discord server, ask some people that have gone to the jam previously, hey, what is the most popular game engine that is used at your site? And if they respond with the engine that you've never used before, I would highly recommend you to check out some tutorials in the weeks before the jam that involve that engine, of course, so that you can get familiarized with it so that you don't run into this problem where you hear this really cool idea from a group of people over there and you don't join their team because you're scared that you won't be productive because you never used that engine before. So be prepared. I would highly recommend learning Git before the jam starts. Now, what is Git? Git's just a source control software that lets you track files and push them to other teammates. There's lots of tutorials on YouTube about it. You can check them out. I recommend you to do it because there's been jams that I've been to and I've seen a project get corrupted midway through the jam and that is no fun. But if they were using Git and they were committing every you know, hour or so, then if the project gets corrupted, all they have to do is roll back to that last commit and they're good. So highly recommended, check it out. Tip number four, if you've never been a part of a game jam group experience before, I would recommend you to go to the Global Game Jam website. They have a list of all their past themes and jump in a Discord call with a group of friends, take one of those themes and try to build a game around it. Just, you know, talk about the design of the game, how you would like it to play. One thing I would recommend doing is to try to keep the core of the game small. Something that you would think a group of three to five people could build within a day and a half. Usually these global game jams are around two days, 48 hours usually. And you'd like to be able to finish the core of the game just over about halfway through the jam so that you have the rest of the jam to polish the game and maybe add some features that weren't necessary for the core of it, but would make it more fun. So repeat that process with a couple of different themes, and that will help you get prepared for when the theme for your game jam is announced. <laughs> Next tip, examine the progress of your game like midway through the jam. This way, if you don't think you'll be able to finish the game by the end of it, you can cut some features, cut some content, rescope and make it more of a manageable task to finish by the end of the jam. It is so much more fun to get to the end of the jam with a finished product instead of one that doesn't work. I've been on both sides of it. <laughs> Next up, try to download any softwares that you think you'll need before the jam starts. If you think everyone's going to want to use the newest version of Unity or Unreal or Godot, make sure that you have the newest version installed. Most of them aren't cross-compatible from different versions to versions. Also, if you're a student and you're going to be jamming from home and you don't have access to the proprietary and expensive softwares that you may have at school, there is a ton of alternatives out there for Photoshop, Maya, and then code editors, VS Code's free for the programmers. So just get prepared, make sure you have everything pre-installed so you're ready for the jam. Before we move on to tip number seven, if you want to hear how my game jam turns out for 2021, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell 
and I'll be uploading a video about it within the next couple of weeks. Tip number seven, get some sleep. You'll be more productive and you'll be less on edge with a good night's sleep. But here's the thing, make sure you set your alarm. You don't wanna sleep in half the day on Saturday or Sunday to find out there's only a few hours left before the, the jam closes. This has happened to people. And now I wanted to bring on someone who I really respect when it comes to game jams. He's been in at least five global game jams, I think. Also been on teams on several remote game jams, which I think really will help him, you know, bring some, some more tips to this video. This is the bonus tip section. That's right. So Thomas, how do you go about, you know, some pretty key elements when it comes to game jams, like planning, communication, and how do you get yourself ready to be in that kind of intense environment pre-game jam? Hey, thanks for having me on. So um, when it comes to planning for a game jam, uh, one thing that me and my friends like to do that I think is pretty fun is uh, the day before the game jam, we kind of all get together. I know it's a little hard physically, but you could also do this virtually over Discord. Um, we like to go on itch.io, which is a uh, itch.io, uh, which is a website used to share games for free and you can just go up there and download it there's a whole section full of game jam games that you can just go in and download and play and the day before we like to get together and download a whole bunch of game jam games we like to go to the global game jam website if you're participating in global game jam you can look at previous year's games and download those on the home page they have like a random game on there that you can just click and download and see what other people did. And then we just spend a while playing them, looking at what they did, you know, what went right, what went wrong, what could we learn from that, just kind of help generating ideas. You, you never want to be married to any kind of idea. No. You never want to go to a game jam and, and be like, this is the kind of game that I'm making. Um, it, it's good to have some ideas like, you know, I could do this and this is how I could do it, but you really want to come in with an open mind because like some of the best part about the game jams are the brainstorming session where they give you a theme and you know you have to come up with a bunch of different ideas from that and then like i've had it so many times where i come up with this initial idea and then i talk to somebody about that idea and they go whoa wouldn't it be cool if this happened and then suddenly the entire idea is different i love how ideas can grow when you bring them into a bigger group like that definitely like it, 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 at our school they used to do this thing where like uh it was like a mob <laughs> where this is the theme. All right, everybody go out and brainstorm. And then there'd just be crowds and crowds of people. And then people would, it was hilarious. People would just go from group to group to group, looking at their different ideas and then contributing and then like maybe moving to another group. And then eventually those groups narrow down into people that are like, I really like this idea. I'm going to stick with this group of people. <laughs> um, Definitely. So do you think that checking out the previous projects might help you when it comes to scoping your next game because you're you're probably going to see some super successful games where people like push the boundaries but you're also probably going to see games where they they tried to do too much and they end up with the incomplete product at the end definitely I, I think once you look at enough games you'll probably you know if you're new to game development you'll probably start to kind of get a sense of what's possible when you have a high and low range of success from the games you download especially if you download enough of them um and you can look and see oh they tried this well that didn't really quite work out did it <laughs> and you also may see like a cool feature that someone tried they weren't successful in and you're like oh but, but i think i think if i did this i think it would work definitely like bit of a side tangent but that's also some of the coolest things that i've seen from game jam is where they build a game around this like one mechanic that's just such a good hook of an idea and then after the game jam they just go and expand it just because that mechanic in and of, in and of itself was cool mm -hmm. now could you go into how you go about communicating and once you're in the game jam how do you plan out and, and divvy up those tasks it goes without saying that communication is is very very important uh when it comes to making a game um but one thing you want to make sure is, is again if it's game jams are always a learning experience if you're new to game development and you're in a 
team full of new developers, you don't want to leave anybody behind. You don't want to leave anybody out. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to wall yourself off and just, you know, work on your tasks and then come back with a huge lump and say, okay, here you go, put it in the game. Um, but on, on because... top of that, everyone's been there. Everyone's been that new kid at the table and and you you want to be accepted and brought in and, and helped, you know, to, to feel like you're contributing instead of like, oh, there's some really awesome people on this team and I'm not. Dang, I wish I could do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like one huge way to avoid that is um, because like the, the reason why I bring up the analogy of, of walling yourself off is like you could be doing this thing and then little did you know that you know somebody on your team because you're not communicating they wanted to do it too and they did it twice you know um so to make sure that doesn't happen and make sure everything's delegated and nobody's being left out you should really use a um like a some form of task tracking like a spreadsheet a list um or you know you could use trello it's a really cool free service that's like a you know, to-do list, you can invite people on and then move tasks around. Um, and that'll help you plan your game and, and delegate these tasks. You know, not, even, even not considering the leaving people out or conflicting, but game jams are just way too short to waste work. You don't, oh, you don't yeah. ever want to have duplicate work done. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Everything you do is valuable. Um, this also helps when it comes to feature creep and scope in that, you know, you can come up with a list of tasks that are like absolutely vital for the game and some out of scope stuff that you can maybe cut down to like, hey, we're, you know, the plane's crashing. We need to drop some weight, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, having it, having it listed thing. out there definitely can help with pulling things. Yeah. Because it'll give you a really good idea of, okay, what can we lose when we're running out of time? Well, thanks and... for joining me, man. You know, where, where can people find you? Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm uh, Bizarre Fog on uh, Twitter and I'm on uh, YouTube. I'm Bizarre Fog Media. I, on uh, Twitter, I just like post a bunch of random game dev and Halo ramblings. Uh, YouTube, I uh, do a couple game dev things. So, yeah. You're also posting a lot of awesome concept art for, you know, potentially upcoming projects. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so go check it out, guys. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, ring <laughs> that bell, my friends. And happy jamming. Most yeah, importantly... You don't want to get overwhelmed by all these tips. If you don't get them all done before the jam, don't worry about it. What's important is to go and, and, and get that experience because the next jam is going to be easier.